Hello everyone and welcome back to day 33 of Bitwise where we code a complete software hardware stack for a simple computer from scratch. Um, so I decided to, uh, to take a detour for a couple of days to work on some compiler features that I had been punting on um, rather than uh, start working on, uh, after the simulator, I was planning on starting working on um, a fourth system using our new simulator and assembler. Um, and so I hope to still begin that maybe on Friday, which is the third, you know, the third stream of this week. Um, but I think uh, today and next stream and, and off stream and the time between them, uh, I want to work on some compiler features that I feel that uh, I've been slacking on and uh, kind of feel like clearing my palate, I guess, a little bit. Um, and so let me just talk about what I want to implement on today's stream and maybe we'll get to more than that, but um, this should at least be, be doable uh, within the time limit of the stream. So, um, you know, the package system was, uh, was implemented a while ago and it works. Uh, it has, um, you know, you can, you can import a library. Uh, you can do bulk imports. You could do explicitly enumerated imports. You can do renames when you name, you know, when you explicitly enumerate symbols to import and stuff like that. But one basic thing that wasn't supported because it sort of required a change in the resolver um, that at the time I, I punted on um, is that you can't, for example, just do import libc and then libc dot get char which is something that clearly should be supported. You shouldn't have to either do bulk imports or explicitly uh, enumerated imports. You should be able to, to do this. And you should also be able to do stuff like, you know, you should also be able to do this even, right? Like um, something like that, if you want to. Um, and so that's what I want to implement today. I have a rough plan in mind for how to implement that. Um, first, I want to compare it to an existing feature, which is implemented currently in an ad hoc way, and which I think will be subsumed by this new mechanism we're going to implement for the for the package stuff. Um, and that is, if you currently, um, if you use a type name as a in a function position in a call position like this. Um, then rather than being interpreted as denoting you know a function or a function pointer or something like that it's interpreted as being essentially a cast right a, a type a coercion operation um, and the way that's implemented is pretty ad hoc um, because normally normally in an expression context if you have you know you have an, op an operator expression and an operand expression these are recursively resolved and you get something back that denotes a value of some type um, and then you say, oh, this thing has to be a function pointer. Uh, and then you do the call, assuming the argument types match and so on. Um, but in the case of this, you actually can't do that because if you try to resolve this as a normal expression, then this will say, well, this doesn't denote a variable, it denotes a type or something like that. Like it doesn't denote the right kind of symbol. Um, and so right now, uh, and this has been the case for a while, if you look at how calls are handled, um, it's pretty ad hoc. Basically, um, it checks that the left operand has to be a name, then it tries to resolve the name, and it sees if this thing can be interpreted as a type, uh, you know, and, and so sort of special cases it. And the special casing is fine for what it is. Like, basically, this code here probably has to exist as a special case some way, um, but it would... Um, I've been thinking that rather, you know, you're going to run into a similar problem to what this is trying to solve uh, when you start doing, what, did I delete that already? When you start doing stuff like this, um, because libc, I mean, right now libc is not going to be a symbol at all. Like when you do import whatever, it doesn't in turn uh, a symbol in the package map under that name. But even if it does, even if symbols can denote packages, um, you know, uh, in this kind of context, it would not, uh, it would not work. And so we have a choice of basically, um, um, we can do, I guess, one of a couple of things. 
Um, maybe we'll do the the shortcut. Um, maybe we'll do yeah. Let's try the the shortcut method, which is kind of a generalization of what we're doing here. So basically, um, the first thing we want to do. Yeah, so let's actually just take it piecemeal. Let's just start by actually, when you do an import statement like this or an import directive, uh, let's actually create a binding between that uh, library name and the um, and the package symbol. Um, so if you look at different types of sims right now, you can see these are the different kinds. And so we're going to add one called package. Um, and... Um, <laughs> this thing here is a little bit of a, don't know if, if we can do a consistent rename and have it work. Um, maybe let's call it home package. Let's see if this can actually resolve. Yeah, I've been having problems with this. This doesn't always seem to work, this automated sort of refactoring, semantic aware renaming. Um, Let's try to do that refactoring. Um, sorry, this thing is off screen. <laughs> and now it got docked, and now it got screwed up the width. Um, Let's try something like that. Probably will catch most cases. Okay. Let's see if that still works. It's a good thing about having a compiler. You can actually check your shit. Um, So um, yeah, symbols symbols have home packages, but they can also um, <laughs> oh god. Um, symbols have home packages, um, but they can also denote packages in, in their own right. Like when I do import libc, I want the current package to to, to have that as an association, basically. Um, and so some of this stuff should um, I guess this thing is always there. I guess it'll be something like this. We forgot to terminate something. All right. Guess whatever. Probably like that. And um, now, when you do import package, um, let me just remind myself of where that takes place. Right, so it takes place here. Um, right, right, right. I guess we can do it here. Um, what is that called? I'm trying to remember when you call process package imports, are you the current package or not? So 
So we compile a new package. We enter that. Right, so this is the current package. The thing we're compiling is the current package when we're processing imports. Um, which means that actually a bunch of these things could just use the current package as the implicit target. Um, but let's see here. Um, all right, let's do it like this. Decal import names, decal import num names, minus one. Um, so let's use that as the import name. And then is it put sim or um, I guess it would be something like this, but we should use um, So we kind of want something like this. If decal name, blah, blah, blah. Uh. Um, so process package imports. So sim kind, so it's a package. This is probably going to be moved into a function, but let's just incubate it here. So it's a package. It has this name. Um, and then it's associated with, I guess, this declaration. Um, so what does this initialize? This is all zero initialized. In package, print package, that resolves. So. All right. Um, so I guess this might work. Okay. I guess it might not work. All right, let's just. Probably because we added a new case to that enumeration, so some of the um, some of the switches are hitting the default case and asserting, right? Yep. Um, I think for packages, we want to do nothing. When you resolve a packet symbol, 
This is like when it's reachable by that name. So I don't think that necessarily an issue. Okay. Um, so that's number one. Oh no, we have to create that association. Um, set up that association. And um, so now it's in the symbol table. I think one thing we want to do while we're here is we want to add some extra syntax to imports. Um, so first, let's do this. Um, if not as relative, well, okay. Let's do this. So after the first name, you can have um, you can have an assignment. Um, and if there is that, then We want to structure this. So anyway, the basic idea is we want to still support something like this, but then you also want to be able to do this. And so after you've read the first part, you can have this kind of assignment and then another package path. Um, and so by default, there's no rename name. So we read this, and then assuming it's not relative, and you can match this uh, assign, then we set the rename name to the first part, and we want to read a second part. Um, but actually kind of not, um, I think you want to do something like this. Um, Fatal error um, posts. Um, it's a little bit weird, but um, 
okay. Push the first name and then read the rest. It's just that still compiles. And now if I do test one, I should be able to do something like, let's use capital C as an example. If I do this, uh, that should work. But if I do this, it should complain about that error we just put in. Um, and, I, and I should be able to use that with these prefix dots as well. Um, indeed. All right. Um, now, we're not actually setting this on anything. Like, we're, set, we're recording the rename name, but we're not putting it in the AST node. I think we should probably just make that the declaration name. That makes sense to me. Um, so if we go to this, let's make this first part. Now, if we go back here, um, you have two choices. You can either use this if it's non null, or you can fall back to the last component of the name path. That makes sense to me. Um, now you have to be able to actually reference this thing. An expression context, and this is where um, let's see, this is where you, there's two paths essentially, depending on how general you want to make it. And I think maybe the right way to do it um, is to take a similar approach to what we did for call nodes, where um, we do something like this. I think the difference is this has to be kind of a while loop and it has to be left folding or something like that so that when you do ABC you can have you know each everything except the last component basically can be a package um, so let's try that resolve expert field this is for doing dot access we already have some auto magical behavior here from the way that stuff works. Um, so let's see. I'll just remind myself of what's in here. The left part is an expression, and the right part is a name. And so um, I think you can kind of do the same thing we do here. Let me just copy and paste that as a template. Um, maybe it will turn out this is not really uh, a good way to do it. So, so basically, the alternative that I would be contemplating here, I don't know why I lost my copy and paste buffer. Um, the alternative that I was contemplating and actually thought I was going to do before the stream started is um, to just generalize. Like right now, all operands are values, essentially. They have to denote an R value or an L value. You know, They can be constant or not or whatever, but they're always values. Um, and now this thing is garbage. Um, and so we could generalize it to be able to denote, for example, types for uh, the context where we're treating a type as a uh, as a casting operator, uh, or in this case where we're denoting a packet, so we can use it like that. Um, Um, and I think this will, well, let, let, let's see if we can uh, 
get this to work in this context and maybe we'll change it later. But um, so basically you would check, uh, you would check this to see if it's a name. No, that's not even true. So let, let, let's see, because you have to support nested. If you want to support nested ABC, you know, like test one dot subtest one dot foo or something like that, Let's think about the AST structure of this node. So we have the top level node and the top level node essentially, it, it, like this is how it's associated. So we can't actually do the thing I wanted to do. You could do it some, I mean, you, you could do it by making a helper function that tries to drill down into the left spine, like if is package or something like that. Um, I mean, yeah, let's maybe try that. Um, so yeah, let's try it. We can throw it out later if it doesn't work out. So there's two up, there's two cases basically. It's either this or that. Um, if it's neither, then it's there's no package denoted by it. Um, if it's a name, we try to resolve the name. Um, and we return that associated package. Actually, let me write it like this. So then just the fall through case is where we return null. Um, and if something is a field, then basically I guess how we do it is if um, what is it expert field so um, Try to drill down the spine of this AST node. And if that, do we have get packet sim? Yeah. Uh, if package, get packet sim. Um, expert field dot name if sim and sim kind is sim package um then return sim package And then what you can try to do here is uh, try resolve package There's resolve name. What's the right resolve name operand? That's the one that returns. Um, I think the problem is resolve name operand does not really work on a foreign package. So that should probably be changed a little bit.
Okay. Um, let's see, resolve expert field. What is it called? Isn't it called food package? Yeah. Um, Actually, I think the way this try resolve package thing works is not quite right. Um, because there's two kinds of failure, I think. Like this, for example. So if I have ABC, which basically means this, I resolve this part. So A resolves to a package, and then B. No, I think that's probably, let's try this. Let's just try it. Um, okay. So it looks like lib, uh, test one is still compiling. Let's get some GC tests. Um, does that work? It does not work. Let's see what's going on. So that's an import declaration, right, because it's reachable. So this should be ignored. Because um, that by itself is not, does not require any code generation. Right, so that's definitely going to be one issue. It's going to be one issue is that now in this context what we're trying to to emit code uh, for this kind of setup um, We have is it resolved sim? What's that thing called? Right, get resolved sim. I think we want to do something similar here. If
then we have to, in the resolver, set up the resolved sim. So if I look at resolve expert call, I do this thing here. Um, I guess that's maybe one reason we can't directly do this. Because I want to be able to do So let's go and look at how that code looks. Right. So that how that that's how that ended up looking. And so the idea here is that um, rather than trying to have the generator, I mean this is true in other cases where we're doing simple package and symbol stuff, is that we directly create, uh, we, we resolve an AST node directly to whatever it denotes, like whatever symbol it denotes, if it denotes a symbol, basically. Um, and so that's one way to do it. Um, let's try a more complicated case, like the nested reference thing. So for example, um, We have subtest one. Um, you should be able to do subtest one dot libc dot get char, I guess, right? Um, I don't think that will make a difference, but let me see. Oh, so that actually works. That is very interesting. Presumably, generated code is the same, right? Um, let me just make sure it's not a weird collision with the other symbol, like I'm doing the lookup in the wrong package. No, I am. Okay, so that was just, <laughs> it's good that I did that. Um, so I think I'm just doing the lookup for these nested things. Let's see here. Um, just make sure it's the right one. So this is 837. And um, it's a field. So it's pr presumably the outer one. Because so if you go in. Yeah, of course.
or I don't know. Let's see. So this is a name. So that's subtest one. That does denote a package. Now we have a package. It's clearly not the right thing because it should denote the subtest one package. So the name is subtest one. Simply get back is the subtest one, whatever. But you get back the test one package. So that must just be uh, that process package imports is not setting up right package association. Right, because this should be the imported package. Okay, and now it compiles. Um, th this way of hooking things up is a little bit hacky, uh, definitely. Um, but let, let me think of other cases to test. Um, first, if I do something like this, is it idempotent? Um, right, right, right. So this is for that. Um, think about this logic here. We need to think through some of this for uh, for other types of stuff. Um, all right. Um, All right, let's see if people are saying anything in chat. Um, boom, boom, boom. All right. Um, I wonder if this, okay. I think this approach is probably okay, but I want to think a bit more about, um, just for five minutes before I, uh, I I am happy with this. I want to uh, think a little bit about the alternative implementation that I had in mind from the beginning. And basically that was, if you look at operand right now, like I said, operands currently always denote values. 
They can be R values, L values, and they can be constants and so on, but they're always something that has a type, right? It's a value that has a type. Um, and so all these different functions return operands in that sense. Um, and rather than doing some of the special case stuff I was doing for the resolving, you could basically, you know, you could do, um, you, you could, excuse me, you could do stuff like, you know, you could have different kinds of operand denotations. So in the case where we're doing, inf, um, inf, if you're doing something like this, um, when it's resolving this left operand, it would resolve it not as a value because of course uh, it denotes a type, not a value, um, but it would just call the normal resolve, resolve something and it would give you back that thing rather than the special case we're doing now. And for packages, it would be the same deal. Um, it would give you a package notation for that operand and then it, yeah something like that um, regardless of that you would still need some mechanism of communicating to the back end uh, once we do the native code back end for risk 5 and eventually I guess other targets probably all this stuff will have to change a little bit because there need to be a more uniform mechanism for uh, for representing the inferred information from the resolver uh, into the generation paths. Right now we have these uh, we have these hash maps for types and symbol resolution. But um, anyway, that was how I was originally thinking of doing it, which I think is the cleaner method, but um, maybe I'll leave the thing that I just put in for now and do this other stuff as part of a grander cleanup and refactoring. Um, I'm so hot today. Sorry, I have to get my fan angled better. All right. Um, so that was feature number one. Um, I, I will mention one thing. When I thought about some of the sort of, not really implementation aspects, but more just higher, higher level design aspects of this feature, um, Right now, the way this feature works is if you do import a b you know a b c, then you can do c dot whatever. Like it's basically the last component of the name. If you don't have an explicit uh, rename, then it's the last component of the name that is in effect. Uh, like that becomes the sort of the name of that import. Um, the annoying thing about that is. Um, you, if you do import ABC, you can't say ABC X. And basically, the re and maybe this will change later, but if you think about the implications of this, the problem is if you also have A imported, then it sort of implies, I guess, that there's a symbol inside A's package namespace, which is B, and then inside B's package namespace, there's something called C, but that's not necessarily the case because A decides what its own symbols are and stuff. And so, I don't know. Uh, for now, I just decided to use the last component of the name as the import name. Uh, you can, of course, do global overrides, or you can do these renames if you want. Um, all right. Um, I guess we have 30 minutes at least left. So I think... Uh, I will do the other feature, which I've been wanting to do. And that is, I mean, let, let me think if I'm ready to do it. Do I know how I want to do it? So basically the feature is uh, unnamed structs and unions, which uh, we have used extensively in C code, like the stuff here. Um, it's not strictly necessary. You can always have just have fields there with those names and you can, you know, rather than using this kind of flat name, uh, flat, flat field access approach, you can just, you know, uh, like, I mean, I'll show you in the assembler, for example, which is not open. Um, all 
Right. So rather than using these flat things, we've just had explicit structs like data, and then you have to do, you know, token dot data dot val and stuff like that, rather than just doing token dot val. Um, this can get a little bit annoying. It's one of the nicer features. It was officially introduced in C11, but it's been supported by basically all compilers since the 90s. Um, almost all compilers since the 90s. I don't think VC6 has it, but um, anyway. So it's a um, it's a little bit. There's different ways you can choose to implement it. Um, and I think I actually started putting in at least the AST related stuff at one point to support it, um, like aggregate. Yeah, I put in I put in the stuff here. Um, basically, the way I plan on implementing it is first off, the syntax is going to be well, pretty much like the C, uh, like the C code transposed into kind of ion but if you wanted to do something like this in ion with this proposed feature it would be <clears throat> well it'd be a dot 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 to write it all out um, and then you would basically do union struct This kind of thing. So pretty much exactly like C, right? Um, pretty much. Fewer semicolons, but that's about it. Um, and so yeah, this is a <laughs> it's a little bit of an annoying feature to implement. Um, you can, I would say, there's basically two implementation approaches. One is you can choose to just represent these as being especially in C where you have, yeah, anyway, you can choose to just represent these as completely new types uh, that are anonymous. And then they have some special status where when you're doing, a, say, a, a field search, you're trying to access a struct by, you know, saying uh, foo.x or whatever. And if x is part of an anonymous uh, substruct or subunion, you basically just you search the top level fields and then you descend into the substructs and subunions recursively to to find matches but otherwise they're just like any other so it's really just a modification of kind of the namespace um but but the fields still exist in some sense uh, you know they're still sort of it would it would be kind of like you know like this um like it would almost be like this except that um you know the namespace is flattened so that it recursively searches these guys when you're uh, when you're doing initializers and name lookups and stuff. Um, I think in Ion it's a better fit to treat these as just a way of modifying. Um, I guess the layout basically. Um, like the, the memory layout, because that's ultimately what you're doing here. You're kind of trying to specify that these two are mutually exclusive and so they can overlap in memory, but these two and the substruct are not mutually exclusive. They're sequential in memory and stuff. So um, that's kind of what I had in mind for the implementation. And uh, there's a bunch of things that have to change in our code uh, to support that, but I think that's probably the way to go. So I don't know if, uh, how, how, if we can finish that in the stream, but um, let's do it. So right, so I added um, I added it used to be that there was just one kind of aggregate item and that was a field that denotes you know like a normal field as a type, etc. Um, but now we have substruct and subunion, and uh, there is also you know a subaggregate pointer to go along with it. So if you're a subunion or a substruct, you have a subaggregate pointer that points to that thing. Uh, I don't think I have changed the parser though. Um, so let's look at that. Right, so you can see um, there is, uh, let me just familiarize myself with this code. Right, so it looks like um, it always assumes it's a name, 
And so I think one thing that has to change for sure is that um, you want to say, I think we have to refactor a bunch of this code actually. Uh, but anyway, let's get started. So I think first you want to be able to say, if match keyword, is it name struct, or struct name, um, First, let me just do this without changing anything else. It's already broken. That's great. Um, I thought it was match keyword. Oh, right. Struck keyword. OK. Um, So this is the part where I would want to I would want to just do this. Substructs. Where does that change it? Um, I think it must be some other error that's occluding it. So uh, anyway, parse aggregate. So I think what you want to do here is you want to take what's currently um, kind of part of this thing. Like this basically I think currently all of that stuff, if you look at decal, I think this was currently, yeah, currently it's just by this. Probably we should do it like that and then um,
it. I guess we have to port declare this because there's a mutual recursion. Wait, what are we using this for right now? Parse decal aggregate. Why is that being used? Okay, so that is the thing. So why do we have these? Okay, so these are just straight up dead code, I guess. All right. Um, Pointer to an aggregate. Um, I really don't understand why that's saying that's a different int. Because absolutely it says that shit when it doesn't know what that type is. Oh, it's because I'm too used to ion. Okay, so this is type info. Type info dot ion line thirty four. Okie dokie, this is the very first item. Yeah, this all looks pretty busted. Like the position isn't set correctly and shit like that. Um.
I must have screwed up some of the this position kind. Let's make all of these explicit. Parse the name, then I open brace, parse a bunch of these, make a list, make an aggregate, look it up. It's funny. So this seems to be related to the like the line is right, but the other stuff isn't. I'm trying to remember where this stuff gets set. I think it's in um I mean I'm surprised they would happen as a side effect of the changes we just made. It's the part that doesn't make much sense to me. It's almost like memory clobbering, except that doesn't make don't see how that would happen here. So we pass down the position. Oh wait, yeah, this is for substruct, so that doesn't really enter the equation, I suppose. Um, okay. So here we have the right position. Um, You know, I wonder if that's the issue. No. So if you look at that string pointer, that's clearly a null pointer that's been treated as a struct or something like that. So it's been pushed away from zero by eight bytes. Um,
which is very odd to me. Try something here. This is going to be classic. No, it's not the issue. Sometimes, if you have dumb bugs with unions where you're aliasing things and overwriting it wrong, um, temporarily turning them back can be useful. We use a dummy value to see if the could that really be the issue? So this mem sets to zero. Oh God, I'm a moron. That's what it was. It was taking size of aggregate lowercase, which is a pointer size thing. So it was a memory clopping bug. And that's also why the size was 8, because I'm on 64-bit. Okay. That was nasty. Classic C bug. All right. Um, so now everything is as before, and feature-wise, but we have all this extra parsing ability. Um, and so I think now what I want to do is... Um, So this is the function that takes a type and, and completes it. And completing basically means to kind of fill in um, well, let's see here. What do we do exactly? So this is before substructs and subunions. So we basically have to go through everything. Resolve all those field types and make a list of the fields, check for duplicates, and then do this at the end. So right now we have this big fields thing. If you want to do a kind of sloppy version of this, um, you could do something like this. Okay. 
So anyway, that all stuff seems to work. Um, and now, so I guess there's a couple of things we have to do. If we are okay with filling in Actually, let's do it this way, which is going to generate wrong type info, but um, is an okay place to start. Um, token data val. So let's say token data, let's just use this as a test case. So token data val. This becomes token val, token data stir becomes token stir, and so token data becomes something like this. And that should. Right, so you can't do this anymore. You have to do this. Right, so this is from the C code. There is from the C code, which is expected because currently we're not emitting um those declarations correctly so decal aggregate decal decal struct um So what we're doing here is essentially right now is currently it's currently assuming that we only have field fields. So this stuff is okay for that. Um, but for the other stuff, um, Um, so for this shit here, I guess we do
you know what, let's, um, I think I should probably be out here, to be honest. Ta-da. So I guess if you look at token, see we have the anonymous union here. Um, <clears throat> the part that's now a total lie is our, uh, the ion compilers type info thinks everything is just a flat struct, um, which is, is not as much of a problem as you might think in most cases, but it's definitely not acceptable. Uh, of course, in the C side, it's going to be correct, but it's going to be inconsistent if uh, in the, say, the, the dynamic type info or any other weird cases like that. Because right now, if you recall, we were just um, basically, in this complete aggregate function, we were just kind of recursively walking stuff to build the list of fields. And then calling these complete struct, complete union functions. So um, I think what has to change, basically, is that um, Right, so I think this is fine because basically the, the what we want to do is for these substructs and subunions, we want to basically just use a different approach to calculating offsets, but otherwise it's a flat namespace. That's still my plan. Um, Um, maybe the way to do it is to okay I think what we're going to do We're going to change the way this code works. Um, we're not going to build the flat list here. We're going to leave that to the low level type code. So this is basically going to be or maybe we maybe that mixes things too much because we do want to resolve type specs to types. Basically kind of what we want is we want a semantic equivalent of aggregate over here. Um, okay, let me think.
okay, maybe you recursively resolve the subunits and substructs as independent types. Um, me think. Is it stop the stream here since we've been going for an hour and a half? Um, so so all right so yeah let's let's stop here. So the current state of this is you know what features did we implement? We implemented. Um, let's see if we can bring up the test file to show. We implemented you know renames for for package symbols, and you can now have explicit. Um, these sort of package prefixes or the path for accessing them. Uh, so that was number one. And the other one was anonymous structs and unions. And right now they're kind of half implemented in the sense that they work if you stay away from stuff that relies on the ION compiler having um, correct type info um, for its types, which as long as you're using the C transpiler backend is less of a problem than you might think, but um, definitely needs to be fixed. I think I need to refactor the split between the type.c and the resolve.c type code um, and think about a good organization for this, but um, shouldn't be too hard, but it'll probably take another 45 minutes. And so I don't want to get started on it now. So let's call it a day for that. Um, my plan is to yeah do at least one more stream um, this week to catch up on compiler features that I have been longing for and other people have requested. So these were two of them. Um, and so, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll probably do this and a few other things today. And then next stream, we'll do a few more other things. And then we'll get get, uh, get back to the, uh, the RISC-V stuff. Um, my plan is for Friday, we will start implementing the fourth system. And assembly code, and that will probably be a few thousand lines of assembly code. So this will be the first substantial thing we write purely in assembly. So uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out, and um, uh, I will see everyone next time.